Hello, I'm Atubo George and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. Hey, now today is Friday and I know God's great plans for you. The plan of manifesting his love in your life is so great. And my prayer is that you will receive it. The giving has never been the problem. It is receiving it that has been the issue. And that's why this week the Lord have led us to that place of manifestation. And I bless God for all the testimonies that have been coming in. I bless God for everyone that have been healed. I bless God for everyone whose eyes have been opened. Something new is starting in your life in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hey, before going to today's broadcast, can we call for that daily bread? Now remember, you're calling even for the weekend. So open your heart to receive every good thing you need. Praise God. Join me now in faith and declare, say, Father, I receive right now my daily bread. It is coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I, I told you this week, the, the, the anointing have just been so strong as we're praying. The Lord opened my eyes. I saw a, a lady with her little child. I think the child is, is sick. A little, I see a little boy that is not feeling well. Can you place your hand on that child right now? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, I command your healing on this child now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, whatever is causing this fever, I command it to go right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I cut off this child from this hand that is troubling him right now. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Be healed, child. Be completely healed. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Now, sometimes, see, people don't know this. See, the Bible says, if any is sick amongst you, let him call for the elders of the church so that they will pray for him. And the Bible made a striking statement there. It says, and the Lord will save the sick now and then he says he says that no he says the prayer of faith shall save the sick then he now says and the lord shall raise him up and now what's the difference between the prayer of faith saving the sick and the lord raising up that person i'll tell you and this is where sometimes people neglect the prayer of faith so somebody says, hey, go to the hospital now, go to the hospital now. Hey, before you think of going to the hospital, remember to pray or receive the prayer of faith. You see, the prayer of faith, I'm sharing this with you because of, because of what I saw while I was praying for this child right now. The prayer of faith will detach. Now, the moment someone is sick, but already the spirit of death is trying to penetrate that. Now that's what happens when, no matter the sickness, call it malaria, whatever it is. The moment someone is sick, the spirit of death is beginning to look for an opportunity into that life. Because see, he wants to reign as a king. <laughs> that's his intention. Now what the prayer of faith does, it, it pulls, separates that person from that spirit so it says the prayer of faith shall save then the lord will raise him up now that's the healing process now sometimes it can be instant sometimes it can be for a while but first and foremost now it's not every prayer that is the prayer of faith see when you pray for the sick make sure you release your faith 
Not good. Yeah, Father, I pray that you please, oh God, please heal this person. Hey, he says, we shall lay hands on the sick and the sick shall recover. So when we pray, we, 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 we connect our mind to the Spirit of God, that He will give us words to speak. So when we speak, we release faith-filled words. Now remember, the Bible says faith comes by hearing, and hearing the voice of God. So when I, when I, when I close my eyes to pray, the first thing I do, I listen for the voice of faith. And because the Lord will direct you on how to pray. He'll be the one to give you the words to pray. You understand? And that's why sometimes when we go to pray for sick people, we, we begin to share truth with them. Now, when we're sharing truth with them, what are we really doing? We're waiting for that voice of faith to come. We're, we're listening for it. And the moment that word comes, you say exactly what you have heard. Now, what's that? That is the prayer of faith because you are responding to what you have heard. It saves the sick person. Thank you, Lord Jesus. While I was praying for that child, now, now the, the sickness itself looks just like a fever. But why would the Lord bring it to my attention? Because as I was praying, I saw that a hand was trying to snatch that child away. A hand is trying to snatch that child away. And the Lord brought it and says, I want you to pray for this situation. See that now? Now when you ignore things like that, and something happens, and like, oh, where was God? Where was God? God showed up, but someone was not sensitive enough. And, and these are the questions we will answer on that day when we stand before him. And that's why you shouldn't be so busy and ignore the promptings of the Lord. Please don't do that for your own life, for the life of everyone around you. Sometimes you may be driving to work and you will hear the Lord says, can you pray for Susan person right now? You may be at your office doing an important task and the Lord will interrupt you and say, hey, can you take a few minutes to pray for Susan person? Can you pause what you're doing? It's not as important as what's going on now. You see this job at the end of the, you're going to submit it at the end of the day or whatever it is. But you see that one for God, Someone's life may depend on it. And I'll teach you something today. You know, sometimes you're just there, you know, and say, ah, somebody, you know, you can even be telling somebody, someone's name just crossed my mind. Or someone's, have, someone's name has been crossing my mind for the past three days. Hey, pray for the person. Pray. So what should I pray about? You don't even know what you should pray. So trust the Holy Spirit to help you. But pray. Pray. And then you, maybe you're, you're with your friend or someone, your spouse or something, and so just, I don't know, this person has just been coming to my mind. Hold the person's hand immediately and say, let's pray for him. Yes, this should be the Christian practice. Let's pray for him. Oh, hey, have you heard from Susan Superstar? No, I haven't. Too. Why? I don't know. For the past one week now, his name has just been coming to my mind. Ah, really? You didn't call? No, I didn't call. Okay, let's pray for the person. That's the first thing to do. And Father, we pray for so and so person right now. Even though we've not heard from the person, Lord, we release grace into their lives right now. Do that first before taking up your phone to call the person. Yeah. Sometimes you may not even be opportune to call the person. Sometimes you don't even have the person's number. But as long as someone is crossing your mind, just pray for the person. You don't know what problems you'll be solved. I remember a few years ago, you know, I was I was with a friend somewhere and we we went to do something. So we were just talking about several things, you know, sharing God's faithfulness. And then all of a sudden I began to talk about a particular couple. You know, and I began to share how God, you know, came true for especially the lady at that time. 
So I began to talk about the whole thing. At some point, I start wondering, why am I talking about this person? Then I found myself praying for her. And we finished what we're doing and we left. Only for me to, I think I can't even remember if I called the person and said, hey, I, I was, I was just talking about you today. And then they said, ah, guess what? I said, what? Just escaped a bomb blast. Like, how? Yeah. So when God brings someone to your heart, you're not just having a good memory. You're not just remembering, you're not just having a good brain that is remembering people. When it comes to your heart, pray. The prayer can just be, Lord, minister grace to that person. That can just be the prayer. Except the Holy Spirit is nudging you for more. Then do what he's commanding you to do. He is the owner. Now I was sharing with you yesterday. That is how he blesses us. That is how we are enlisted in his labor force. Jesus said, ask the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into the harvest field. Sending laborers into the harvest field. He is not talking about everybody resigning from what you're doing and come and walk in church. No, that's not what he's talking about. Hey, listen, if we all sign up for God's labor force, if we all are doing exactly what we need to do, I'll tell you this truth. The church may not be so full, I'm telling you the truth, but the impact will be so much. But now what we're having today is the church filled on Sundays, but then no one is doing the work. Or rather, only a few are doing the work. If every one of us begin to pray when God nudges us to pray, irrespective of where you are, hey, you have few people going to pastor to queue up for the pastor to pray for him. Because in the, during the week, God would have answered their prayers. They don't even know who prayed for them. See that now? If every one of us give as the Lord is instructing us to give, if every one of us tight, as the Lord is instructing us to tight. Because we don't tight right, that's how the devil came in and tried to get the church to forget about tithing completely. <laughs> that's the worst temptation God's children ever faced. The teaching that tithing is not important. That's a teaching of devils. Titan is one of the most important thing. It's a covenant. And that covenant still exists till today. It's Titan of the Old Testament. Sorry. Go study some more. Go study some more. We tithe because we are children of Abraham. Listen. And God said to Abraham, I will bless you and I will bless your seed. So the covenant was with Abraham and his seed. And Abraham's part of that covenant is to tithe. Now, God's done with Abraham and the seed is here. How do you show that you are the seed of Abraham when you do what Abraham did? What's that tithe? When we bring the tithe before him, see, we're doing exactly what Abraham did. And that's what shows that we are obedient. It is the obedience that brings the blessing. It is not what your name is called. So wherever we are in the whole world, we bring our tithe before him. And now here is why 
the devil was attacking it because God's children don't understand what they were, they've been doing. So we, we just got outside at the end of the month and bring it to the church, got outside at the end of the month and bring it to the church. And that's not how God commanded us to tithe. The money belongs to him. He is alive. So why don't we ask him what he wants us to do with his money? Now, now, that's when the Lord told me, he says, son, if everyone will just tithe, just tithe, just tithe. If everyone will tithe right, how? Bring the tithe to the Lord yourself and ask him, Lord, I have your money. What would you have me do with it? And then the Lord will command you, give it to so-so and so, send it to so-so and so. Now, if we all do as he commands us to do. No one will be broke in this world. I'm telling you the truth. No one will be broke. Because why someone is here crying, Father, I need some money. Here is another one somewhere saying, Father, ah, you've just blessed me and, and I have your money. And God says, send that money to Susan and person. Okay, thank you, sir. I'll obey you. And you crying, oh, Father, suddenly your phone beeps. You pick up your phone. Huh? Whoa! And then you make the call, hey, I just got some money. Say, yeah, it's for you. For me? How? Do you know I was just praying for that? God actually heard your prayer because he sent me to give you. Hey, yeah, God will bless where this money came from. <laughs> it came from the storehouse of God. That's the storehouse. The storehouse is not a physical place. The storehouse is in our Pelego Busaya. Hey! <laughs> Mm. Listen, we, we belong to the commonwealth of Israel. I pray you understand this. You are richer than you think. You just didn't know it. You just didn't know. Here you are. Your, your salary is just maybe 20,000 naira a month. You know how that can be. Far less than $50 a month. Think about it. And now, you want to buy a car. And say, don't even dream it. Why? I'm a child of God. Why? Say, how do you want to buy a car? With your salary? How? Aha. Uh -huh. Remember what we read? God gives blessings to his beloved in sleep. So now I want to buy a car. Say, Lord, you go to your father. And because you know that you belong to this commonwealth, <laughs> I said, you don't know how rich you are. You know you belong to this commonwealth. They say, Father, I need a car. I could move. Take your mind off your pain. Take your Put your mind on your father. I need a car. Thank you, Lord. I receive. And here is someone, Lord, I, I just received this money and, and I'm honoring you with my tithe. So, Lord, receive your tithe. And Lord, you, you direct me to where you want. And then you hear the Lord says, buy a car for so so and so person. Right. Uh, why am I thinking of buying a car for so and so person? Ah, uh, no, no. Lord, um, <coughs> here is your tithe. Buy a car for... Uh, now, I know the thing about God, he doesn't hurry. He will instruct you. But you know, anytime you want to pray about that thing, he will remind you again, but I've told you what to do by a car for that person. Now, some of you need to increase your faith to believe that that person can handle a car. <laughs> but, but it's not you thinking you want to buy. The Lord is commanding you. And then you go buy the car and go hand it over to that person. Now, that was your tithe. He said, can I do it? It's the Lord's money. Whatever he tells you to do with it, do. I don't feel I bought you. You didn't buy him a car. No, you didn't buy him a car. No, you didn't. It wasn't your goodwill. You were obeying a command. So buy it and say, Lord, I'm your unprofitable servant like Jesus. If you say, I've done your word. Help him keep the car. That's all you need to do. Don't go about saying, do you know that car? I bought, you didn't buy it for him. 
okay, maybe maybe you went to the shop to pay for it. <laughs> but don't think of it like I helped. You didn't help him. His father helped him. Was it your money? You see, that those mentalities are things we need to repent of. The Lord commands you to give someone and you want to take the glory for it. Thank you very Ah, sir, thank you. Ah, oh, if not for you. And you keep quiet. Say, mm. Hey, rebuke the person in me. So, no, no, no. It is your father. Your father who loves you is the one that blessed you. I'm only a servant. He sent me to you. Hey, no, sir, I know. Ah, to remove this kind of money and give the. No, 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 no. It is God's money. Your father's money. <laughs> I'm t- now, we need to grow in this mentality and walk in the truth. You don't know how many people have gone into evil practices because someone did not obey God where they are concerned. Someone has told God, Lord, if you don't do this thing for me, I'll go and join Ambrobal, robbery Gang. And here is God ministering to somebody. Give that person this money. Say, ah, no, ah, no. This money is my tithe. I must take it to church on Sunday. Ah, n- never. Ah, ah, ah. I don't know. I'm just hearing that. No, no, no. Eh? Ah, ah, ah. So I will now not fill my tithe card on Sunday. Yeah. No, 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 no. And that person ends up joining Amro Brigham. because of you. Can we just obey God and spread the blessing of the Lord all over? Let people be blessed when they are supposed to be blessed. Let it be true you. Why you hear God, and that's how you work for the Lord. You see that action, God will bless you for it. Your obedience will attract him to take care of you. Our time is all praise God. I bless you today. As you're hearing the voice of God, so men are hearing God's voice concerning you. And the blessing of the Lord is flowing in every direction and it's coming to you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Have the best weekend ever. God bless you. Bye-bye.